Hello, and welcome to SR Experts Tech Talks. My name is Mike Mangino, and I work for Nokia's Network Infrastructure Division. We're here to talk technology today with our experts. And as usual, if you have any questions after the talk, feel free to reach out to your Nokia representative. Hello. In this session, we're going to talk about building the next generation IP optical network. My name is Amir Birjandi, I'm, I'm, and I'm a principal consulting engineer with Nokia. Uh, here is a high-level agenda. We're going to do an overview, uh, talk about your design uh, criteria, uh, cover a use case analysis, and finally, we're just going to cover the enablers of the 400 gigi technology. Um, 400 gigi would become or is the center of the next generation IP optical networking. Uh, you can; it is targeted to be used anywhere in metro region, optical, and long haul. And 400 gigi would be the next currency of the networking. So what has changed? Uh, vendors are always trying to put more capacity in the same density, which is the SFP. So they started with one gigi SFP, then it went to the 10, 100, and now 400 gigi. With the introduction of the QSFP DD, the 400 gigi short reach and the coherent DWEDM can be offered in the same four factor. Usually previously DWEDM um, optics were board mounted or if they were pluggables, they would consume more real estate than regular short reach optics. So what enabled this? Advances in technology and also standardization. So 400 gigi ZR and ZR plus will enable coherent DWDM in standard router ports. So you're not going to use router capacity just by plugging DWDM optics in your router. So how can providers take advantage of this technology? Uh, and how could they benefit from it? But first you wanted to actually start redesigning your network or just going into like, you know, plugging these optics everywhere. You first have to understand what the problems you're facing today and what the problems you're trying to address. Is it because of the traffic growth or you have a high OPEX and CAPEX, like, you know, cost? Uh, is it network complexity because you have to manage two different groups? You want to reduce the number of nodes. Uh, what, is, what are you trying to address? After that, you have to define your network. The reason this is important, and everyone knows what their network is, um, it's because there is no one solution fit all. Uh, you may have a simple topology like a DCI interconnect or a simple, um, like, you know, spoke, which can span tens to hundreds of kilometers. Uh, you can operate small metro regions or metro aggregation regions that can span over up to hundreds of kilometers um, or a regional core or a more sophisticated tier one network provider that can span continents and cover thousands of kilometers. Any of these networks would have different requirements, which you should definitely understand and consider. Also, the big part of this is you have this network. So 400 GIGI uh, should actually, it's a brownfield, it's, it's a brownfield deployment usually in a lot of the cases. So after you just went through step one and two, you start to get the requirements, correct? Okay, what services I wanted to do? Uh, what is, should be my network management? How do I interact with my uh, backend systems? I have multiple organizations that I got to work with. So how do I merge them together or how do we interact with each other? Finally, and the most important one is what platforms I can deploy and uh, um, start utilizing. Uh, you remember, now you're putting the DWDM optics in the router, your power per port requirements will increase depending on your solution. If you want higher reaches, you actually have to accommodate that power through that port. Um, and that comes with cooling. So fabric capacity, flexibility of your network, all that is part of your um, requirement gathering. 
And finally, you have to find out what is the best choice for you. Um, the present mode of operation for a lot of networks is you have n by 100 gigi from a router connecting to a transport layer. So you go from a router to the coherent transponder and from the op to the optical system. So there are multiple ways that we can do this. You can actually plug the coherent um, optic into a router, uh, go to a rodem, or directly connect back to back the routers together. Or you can still utilize your uh, existing transponders in the network. That is for longer spans and higher capacity if you need those. So after seeing all that, we're going to use, we're going to cover one use cases. Before we go into the use case detail, uh, we wanted to see where actually we're targeting this use case for. So we are actually looking for 400 gigi ZR and Z plus, ZR plus in an access and a metro aggregation um, environment. So what is our use case? We have a simple ring. That ring includes eight access routers plus one hub router. So the hub, one of the assumptions we are making in this model is that the traffic uh, is fully protected. That means if one, like, you know, one path, the major path fails or the primary path fails, there is always a backup path. And we're also going to consider multiple cases for traffic growth, starting from 50 gig, going all the way up to 800 gig. So what are we, what are we modeling? We're going to model this simple topology um, if we have a hop by hop solution versus if we are going to have a, a DW system, DW, DWDM system plus rodent. So um, we covered the both cases in the last slide. So the first slide is that the 400 GB ZR plus with rodent. That means that traffic uh, would come to A3. I mean, it can be any router, but here actually we're considering the traffic comes to A3. So there are two paths. One is the primary path, which is the green path. And the second is the secondary path in case there is a failure on the primary path. Uh, you should consider that if you're crossing or if you're traversing more than two hops, uh, you are actually going to, you have to downgrade the rate, the 400 gigi downgrade if you're using the rodem. So your rate between two to four hops, you're going to be at 300 gig, more than four hops, you're going to be at the 200 gig um, capacity. So for example, when you come to A3 and if you have 800 gig of traffic, or like, you know, let's say you would have two 400 gigis going to A2 and you would have four going to towards the red path. Um, the bottom line is when you don't have rodent and that is a hop by hop. So every router would you would term, you would go from one A3 to A2 as 400 gigi and A2 to A1 would actually terminate as an IP router uh, and to, all the way till you get to the um, hub router. So let's look at the different cases and how, what the model tells us. Um, if you look at the number of the ports that you require in a hop by hop model versus the 400 gigi ZM bypass, uh, 400 gigi ZR bypass, you need five times number of ports in a hop by hop model, which was expected because everything is terminated at 400 gigi. But that is for 800 gig of traffic. What if you don't have that much traffic? Or what if a vendor, what if a provider doesn't have that much traffic? At low levels of traffic, there is not much of a difference, but if you think that your network is going to grow and you would have more traffic in the next few years, you would see the number of ports grow um, significantly. One thing you have to consider is if you start and design a network um, and do not consider like, you know, the rodems and uh, amplifiers and all that stuff, and later on you want to add that, that is a complete uh, shift. So you have to consider the design choices that you make to Day that may impact your future spent. The next question that can, can come up is like, what if I start regenerating over every two routers? So we said that there is a downgrade, like, you know, in the rate when you have to cross, when you have to go over two hops or so. Uh, if you start to regenerate uh, over every two hops, 
Um, let's compare that when you are going with the bypass and downgrading versus if you're going to regenerate. And as you can see, there is this clear benefit in uh, using 400 ZR++ um, rodents in the same case as well. We have a table here that goes over the full port counts. You can actually reference that later and go and see how we actually calculate that numbers. Again, I want to go back that we have all these models. If you talk to your um, Nokia rep, we can start getting information from your network and try to model your network if um, if that um, if you guys wanted to work on that together with us. One other thing that we modeled was the power usage. In a hop by hop model, we are terminating 400 gigi um, like you know traffic per router. Every router when they wanted to just transmit 400 gigi or uh, transport 400 gigi, they use more than 100 watts. Um, if you look at the Rodem power consumption, it's 4 watt per 400 gigi. And the table on the right, or the chart on the right, shows you the power consumption differences between the two different models. So there is a big difference over it. Thank you so much. Uh, for this, uh, for listening to this. I hope this was a useful presentation. If you have any feedback or comment, please reach out to us. Again, we would love to work with you and model your network and find out what is the right solution for your network. Thank you.